Photoplethysmography, or PPG, is a technique that uses light to measure blood flow. It's commonly used in fitness trackers, smartwatches, and medical devices because it's a simple, non-invasive way to monitor your cardiovascular health. It works by shining a light, often from an LED, onto your skin. When the light hits your skin, some of it is absorbed by the blood and the rest is reflected back. The use of PPG dates back to the early 1930s, when it was first developed as a method to study blood flow. Researchers quickly recognised that the shape of the pulse wave provided valuable information about cardiovascular health, differentiating between healthy and diseased states. But despite its early promise, PPG didn't enter clinical use until the 1980s, when it revolutionised the measurement of blood oxygen saturation in intensive care units with the advent of pulse oximeters. Today, PPG is not only used in clinical settings, but is also embedded in a wide range of consumer devices, offering the potential to transform how we monitor and manage health. The pulse wave signal obtained from PPG can vary depending on where the sensor is placed on the body. So for example, the signal from a fingertip might differ from that of the wrist. This variation happens because different anatomical locations have different vascular structures and skin thicknesses, which influence how light is absorbed and reflected. At the wrist, sensors primarily measure microvascular blood flow since the major arteries are deeper beneath the skin. This location is convenient for wearables like fitness trackers and smartwatches, but can be more susceptible to motion artifacts. The fingertip has a rich blood supply close to the surface, providing a strong and clear PPG signal. This location is often used in medical devices like pulse oximeters. The earlobe or ear canal is another site with good blood flow. It again is often used in specialised medical devices. The anatomical location of the sensor has significant implications for PPG measurements. Devices have to be designed to account for these variations so that the reading they take is accurate. So for example, proper placement is really important for obtaining a reliable signal. For wearable devices, the device needs to maintain good contact with the skin without being too tight, which could restrict blood flow or too loose, which could cause poor signal quality. The choice of light wavelength is also important. So green light is often used in wearables for heart rate monitoring because it penetrates the skin effectively and provides a strong signal, whereas infrared light is useful for measuring deeper tissue changes and is commonly used in medical settings. And then things like arrhythmias, peripheral vascular disease, and skin tone and thickness can all affect the PPG waveform. Motion artifacts too are one of the biggest challenges in obtaining a clean PPG signal. Movements like walking, running or even slight hand motions can introduce significant noise into the PPG signal. This noise can obscure true physiological signals and lead to inaccurate readings. Advanced signal processing techniques and algorithms are then needed to filter out these artifacts and retrieve accurate data. The net result is that getting an accurate measure of a physiological signal from a PPG-derived waveform is not always a guarantee. Heart rate estimation is one of the most common applications of PPG technology, and we've talked about this already. In short, each PPG signal exhibits a pulse wave for each heartbeat, which is caused by the blood volume changes in the microvascular bed. To calculate heart rate, we detect the peaks in the PPG waveform corresponding to each heartbeat. By measuring the time intervals between successive peaks, we can calculate the heart rate in beats per minute, or BPM. And because we can measure heart rate, we can also measure heart rhythm, which involves evaluating the regularity of the intervals between heartbeats. This can be used to detect things like cardiac arrhythmia or to measure your heart rate variability. Measuring, calculating, and interpreting heart rate variability is a whole separate topic, and I've already prepared a lecture on this, which I'd encourage you to have a look at. But in short, your heart is not a metronome, and the variance in the timing of successive heartbeats can give us all kinds of insights into physiological stress. When it comes to cardiac arrhythmia, studies like the Apple Heart Study and the Fitbit Heart Study have demonstrated the potential of consumer wearables to detect atrial fibrillation, one of the most common and clinically significant cardiac arrhythmias, which affects millions of people worldwide and significantly increases the risk of stroke, heart failure, and other cardiovascular complications.
Respiratory rate can be estimated from the PPG signal by analyzing the baseline fluctuations caused by breathing. But as you inhale and exhale, your intrathoracic pressure changes, and this affects venous return to the heart, which in turn alters the volume of blood in the microvascular bed. Blood oxygen saturation, or SpO2, is another parameter that can be estimated using PPG. Pulse oximeters typically use two wavelengths of light, red and infrared, to measure SpO2. By comparing the absorption of these two wavelengths, we can estimate the percentage of hemoglobin in the blood that is saturated with oxygen. This technique is widely used in medical devices and is increasingly being integrated into consumer health devices for continuous monitoring, with good accuracy. Estimating blood pressure using PPG is a bit more complex, but could have huge potential for remote healthcare monitoring and public health surveillance. Not too many commercially available wearables measure blood pressure using PPG, but this will likely change over the coming years as the technology improves. One common method of measuring blood pressure from a PPG signal involves measuring the pulse transit time, or PTT, which is the time it takes for the pulse wave to travel between two arterial sites. By combining PPG data with another signal, such as an ECG, we can calculate the pulse transit time. Shorter pulse transit times generally correlate with higher blood pressure, while longer pulse transit times correlate with lower blood pressure. Algorithms are used to convert pulse transit time measurements into blood pressure estimates. Sleep apnea, especially obstructive sleep apnea, is a condition where your breathing repeatedly stops and starts during sleep. PPG can help to detect sleep apnea by monitoring blood oxygen saturation and identifying patterns of desaturation that occur during apneic events. The PPG signal can also be analysed for changes in heart rate variability and respiratory patterns during sleep. By triangulating these different signals, wearables that track sleep can use this information to alert users to potential sleep apnea, prompting further diagnostic testing and treatment. So, Photoplethysmography has a broad range of applications in both clinical and consumer health settings. And looking ahead, there are loads of exciting possibilities for further integrating and advancing PPG technology. Wearable devices in particular have huge potential, and in the coming years, the focus will be on improving sensor accuracy, reducing noise from motion artifacts, and expanding the range of measurable physiological parameters. But this raises a couple of important issues, including those of data access, harmonization, accuracy, and privacy.